uh, we thought we would uh, record some of these lectures so that you will have uh, a way to look through them rather than having to just come to the lectures themselves. And I'm joined today by the eminent uh, researcher, <laughs> Pavlos Petimanos, who has agreed to sit in and to play the part of a student to ask questions on your behalf and uh, to uh, uh, see if he understands things and to help things move along. Hi, like Pavlos. Hi, liking me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. Okay, so this is compiler optimization, and we're going to go through the introductory lecture, which should be relatively straightforward. So uh, I've introduced you to Pavlos. Uh, my name is Hugh Lather. My office is in the forum in uh, room 110 at the moment. Uh, it may change at some point in the future, so uh, check on my website if you want to see where I actually live, because in a few weeks I should be moving office. And if you would like to send me an email then the email address uh, shouldn't change, so it's hleather at inf.ed.ac.uk. Okay, compiler optimization introductory lecture. Here we go. So we have some textbooks for you guys to look at. Uh, all of these should be available for download uh, online, or you can buy them from a shop uh, or get them from the library. The first one is Engineering a Compiler by Keith Cooper and Linda Torkson. Uh, a very good book, and it's what we're going to be spending the first part of the lecture series going through. Uh, you will see occasionally through the slides uh, a little book sign like this. Hold on, let's see if we draw. There we go, like that. Uh, oops, okay. Uh, which, uh, which will indicate that this is the book that we're talking about, though generally in the first few lectures this is the book that we're going to be looking at. We'll then move on to Optimizing Compilers from Modern Architectures uh, by Alan and Kennedy. Uh, again, available for download. And that will be where we'll deal with uh, dependency analyses and things like this. Okay. Uh, and there are some other books that I would recommend that you have a look through. Advanced Compiler Design and Implementation. Uh, also, The Dragon Book, which is uh, Compilers and Techniques by Atho, Sethi and Ullman. You read that one? Uh, I've read it, but I never remember the title either. No, no, no. It's it's, the, it's, everybody knows it as the dragon. It's just a dragon, dragon, book. dragon yeah. book. Yeah, you can tell it's a dragon book by the dragon on its cover. It's the first great. Uh, yeah, there's a dragon on the cover exactly. Yes, yeah. so it's the first great compiler book. Uh, it's still it's still good. It's maybe a little bit out of date, which is why we're moving on to some other ones. But it has some extra stuff in it that these books don't have, uh, and it's a it's an excellent excellent book to read. Okay, we're also going to go through some research papers in the last part of the course, and uh, you'll be expected to read those papers and to understand them, and they may be examinable as well. Uh, does that worry you, Pavlos? No, it's super exciting. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is Pavlos pretending to be a student because you're not going to be doing any exams, are you? You don't care how hard the questions are going to be, do you? No. <laughs> uh, I think it would be better for them to be as hard as possible. You think so? Yeah, yeah. yeah shall I make them, uh, how, many, how many percentage of the students would you like to see fail? Uh, at least 30%. At least 30%. Okay, that's good, because that's, that's what we're going for. Okay, <laughs> so uh, just a quick note that the idea behind this, this lecture series, behind these uh, videos that you're going to see and behind these lecture slides, is that they are just supposed to give some of the flavour of what's going on. You are expected to read the books. In fact, uh, read the books. I can't say this enough. I can never say this enough to students. Read the books. Pavlos, have you read the books? No. Nope. Are you going to read the books? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, I mean, I mean, are students even supposed to read the books? Students, are, stu they're required to read the books. <laughs> but, oh, okay. Oops, I keep pressing the wrong buttons. All right. So, um, how do we expect you to get the most out of the course? Well, uh, the ideal situation for you guys will be to uh, read ahead in the books before coming to the lectures, uh, so that you can discuss things with me and ask about your misunderstandings and use the lectures more for asking questions rather than expecting the lectures to teach you everything you know. Every year nobody believes me and uh, then they all come a cropper in the exams. So don't be one of those people. Read the books first. Pavlos, you haven't read the books and you're not going to. Pavlos is going to play the um, the role of bad student, I guess. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, I've played that role many times before. In the past. <laughs> okay, but honestly, honestly, do read the books. It's the main way to go through these things. Today's lecture is just going to be to discuss some of the things that you should already know from a compiling techniques course uh, or whatever else you've done at your university. Uh, this compiler optimization course uh, is not going to teach you about the front end of compilers. It is really just looking at the optimizations that are done. So if you don't know anything about compilers to start with, you're probably in the wrong course or you're going to have a hell of a time later. Okay. Uh, take notes whilst you're watching these. 
uh, whilst you're going through your books uh, to make sure that you understand everything and you can bring those questions to the course, uh, to, to, to the lectures to ask me about them. Okay, the coursework is uh, going to be coming up in the next lecture and uh, my advice is that you start that very early. Uh, again, this is something that people usually leave too late and for this particular piece of coursework, um, there's not a huge amount of effort from you guys. There is a lot of compute time required and it can take some weeks of compute time. Uh, if you leave it till late, you will not be able to, uh, to do well in the coursework. Okay. Uh, one thing we've noticed in previous years is that uh, there are sort of two groups of students. There are those groups of students who do very, very well in this stuff. Mostly those are the people who have read the books and asked questions during the course. And then there is another part of the uh, student, another, another set of students who tend to do, do very badly indeed. Um, don't be in those th those set, uh, be in the good set instead. Uh, if you are struggling, if you find this difficult, come and ask me because uh, it's better that you get these things fixed earlier rather than later. Um, and if you don't understand Pavlos, uh, not if you don't understand Pavlos, if you don't understand comma Pavlos, um, <laughs> then uh, then do ask questions because uh, it's, it's probably your fault. It's it's almost certainly my. Yeah, you're well aware of this, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I probably got. In fact, I have left mistakes in these slides specifically to catch out whether or not you're paying attention. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what everybody did. <laughs> but what do you mean? That's a good teaching strategy. Holy moly! <laughs> okay, thanks for that, Pavlos. <laughs> Okay, so, um, yes, so this course is hard. The The other thing I'm going to say is that we're going to start with the easy stuff for the first five or six lectures uh, before we move on to the difficult stuff. Uh, if you find the first lectures hard, um, have a look through and check whether or not you want to change, do this course uh, in the long run. Okay, so, uh, as I said, today's lecture is just an introduction and a recap of things that everybody should already know. Next lecture, we'll talk about the coursework that you have to do. Uh, it's going to be the same as last year. We're going to change it probably next year, but um, you know we'll see how that goes. And then we're going to have uh, a few lectures on classical optimization uh, from the engineering compiler book, and then five or six lectures from the other book about uh, parallelization techniques. And then we'll have some lectures on adaptive compilation, machine learning, that kind of stuff. Uh, and we'll look at some papers and things that you'll have to read to see what uh, real scientists do. When you say machine learning, what does that have to do with human learning? Ah, well, ah, so that's interesting you should ask that. So, uh, so machine learning is a way... We use machine learning in compilers these days to replace the handbook heuristics that compiler engineers have had to come up with before by machine-learned ones which work out for themselves what the best thing to do is and typically do a better job than the compiler... We hope to do a better job than the compiler engineers are doing in the first place. We'll come all we'll come all to that onto that at the end of the at the end of the course. Okay, uh, there may also be occasional lectures on uh, from external uh, uh, speakers. Uh, we'll have some bits for revision and going through uh, example questions and things like that. Okay, mm -hmm. sound good? Yep. You excited? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's just a little bit about what we're going to be doing throughout the course. Uh, we're going to split these lectures up into smaller videos so that you don't have to download huge video files and also so that you don't have to get bored by listening to an hour's uh, stuff in one go. So we'll come back in the next video and talk about what a compiler is, uh, getting on with the stuff that will just be in the very first lecture of the course. Okay, see you in a bit.